Okay. Well, it took us a while to set this up again, so it actually might be a few minutes before these shut off again. <laughs> it's, it might be on a 10 second timer again, I'm sure. And if so, or ten, we'll 10 just... seconds, sorry, 10 minutes. Wow, that'd be distracting. And if so, we could just always open the doors. like we, Exactly. Like we oh, well, that, that will be happening in this. It should have happened in this movie, too. Right. It's called Midnight Screening. I it know. finally happened, people. <laughs> We don't even have to do this show anymore. We've come it's, full circle. It's all come to this. <laughs> it started out with the first episode that we did of this in 2011 yep. on Thor, Thor, a lost episode, and it's the first episode, yep. and it, 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 we're not actually ending it, by the way, this is just to be clear, I am 100% being sarcastic, this is our it's request It's been a great show. 12 years, it's been, great, it's been a great run, people, we were waiting until a movie was called Midnight Screenings, just as... I will end Brad Tries if they do a movie about a man eating himself to death. <laughs> oh, Brad tries. It was so close with The Whale. I should have called that show The Whale. <laughs> I was heavier when I started that show. I could have called it The Whale. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh so this is a movie I'm I'm like cuz I I <laughs> I review some VOD movies sometimes. So I'm always on Voodoo, just scrolling on Tuesdays and uh, Fridays as well. And uh, also looking to see what Scott Foy sends me to. Like, he was the one who told me about Spirit's Revenge. Oh, yeah. So I'm scrolling through there, and I see, oh, 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 midnight screening. Well, I can't do that as a vlog on my own. Uh, Jared and I will watch that next time uh, we get together to do a Patreon request. It, which you can make your request for that, by the way, at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. Click the link in the description. and and in the comments that'll take you to the entry over there where you can where you can make your make your choice and the funny thing about this movie is that i remember um when we did the cinema snob movie and so in my head i was thinking like what if i did movie versions of the other different shows that we had yeah. at the time <laughs> and we were doing midnight screenings back then so i remember thinking like what and it, you, it, it, huh? What would your uh, what would your premise for the movie? <laughs> this movie? Oh, like, it, like like no joke. Like I was like actually excited to see this movie. I like, was like, this is like an alternate universe if we made a midnight screening. Like movie. like all of us would work at a theater. I don't know if we would have worked at a movie theater. Keep in mind, like this, I, I don't even think I took notes on that. Like, oh, okay. On that idea, it was just sort of like an idea in the back of my head. Oh, okay. If we were to ever do a movie, yeah. it would be that, and it would have been like going to a midnight screening of a movie and maybe they're trapped in there for some reason oh, okay. and a killer shows up like this is kind of the cinema snob movie it's like plot 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 killer shows up like <laughs> it probably would have been something like that somebody has to uh, uh, go on a killing spree for some reason right and it probably would have been the same like same type of person who turns out to be the killer in this movie <laughs> So, and even when we started I'm watching... I'm sick and tired of seeing these people in their car reviewing movies. Yeah, and as soon as we started watching this movie, too, we were like, this is shot like if we made this 12 years, <laughs> it years really ago. It really is! <laughs> it, it looked and felt just like paranoia. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, did it. <laughs> so, like, this is an alternate universe if we actually did make that movie. <laughs> And I was having, cause I, 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 ma I briefly managed a movie theater, uh, early two thousands. <laughs> um, so I was kind of, it's some stuff in this movie. What's taking me, this movie is about a group of people who are they They work at a movie theater and they're getting a midnight screening of some re-release movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. Long story short, killer shows up. Right. That's what you gotta know. And so in the movie, like, it's past closing. They're kind of bumming around the theater, just messing with stuff, eating the popcorn, having small talk. And I was kind of going, yeah, that seems about accurate, really, from from when I worked there all those years ago. I was, I liked seeing some stuff, like, well, every movie theater's got Big Buck Hunter, and it was there. I'd, when I worked at the movie theater, it was still film projectors. Yeah. So I kind of liked in this, like seeing what the projection areas look like now yeah. with everything kind of yeah. being digital. So yeah. like, oh, that 
that's some kind of all right yeah i'm kind of digging that i also like being able to tell when this movie was made right <laughs> because never thought i would see prominent artemis fowl <laughs> placement in movies with i was watching this going i wonder if this was shot during covid because the movie posters were of that year but also for things that ended up not going to theaters right. like there's a poster for my spy exactly, in the background yeah. artemis fowl is in a few shots yeah so i was kind of wondering that actually would be kind of easy like during covid when this place right. isn't going to be open anyway and they shot it there and i looked at some trivia and that was the case yep. they shot it when the business was shut down and they were even making it look like because they didn't know if like cops were going to be curious why the place was open so the cast and crew <laughs> if i read this correctly the cast and crew had like paint trucks out front to make it look like there was maintenance going on inside <laughs> of it and they would they would go out there sometimes to like rearrange some things to make it look like they were working that's <laughs> brilliant that is that is definitely our level of uh gorilla filmmaking yeah so so kudos to them for that mm -hmm. um what is i'm not used to these future electronic <laughs> cars what just happened this screen just turned on we're in a haunted car here now people <laughs> your car is welcoming you yeah it is i need to shut no i don't want to hit the power button we didn't have this problem 12 years ago filming in futuristic minority report car with the screens turning on oh my god we're flying i will say that even though there were these uh posters that a lot of stuff felt early 2000s like you said uh they were still running projectors instead of digital no they were running pro digital in this were they yeah yeah they were because the guy the one dude uh kept talking about how much he likes film better oh. than digital oh, so okay. it was like it, the movie wasn't taking place in the early well 2000s. then of course and then you got them using using a pay phone for some reason so. i know i was at first i was like why is there a pay phone there but i was like well this is a really low budget movie yeah. i doubt they i could be wrong but i'm like i doubt they installed a pay phone well, no, like it, but so maybe this movie theater just has a pay phone yeah no 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 i i mean i mean yeah no by all means it probably does have yeah. a pay phone but why are they using it because <laughs> they had to call for food dude like before their movie he has burgers and stuff delivered to him this movie's got some lines in it i was oh, i was having fun with the dialogue in oh, this film oh yeah like like do one dude like doing his like stand-up routine throughout it <laughs> saying things like why do we even give them ticket stubs they're just gonna throw it on the ground <laughs> like he does it more than once in the film <laughs> he, he likes that bit man he's telling everybody he almost gets laid towards the end of it so i guess if, <laughs> if he hadn't died that girl was sorry spoiler we might be spoiling a little of this movie um <laughs> yeah <laughs> huge plot points <laughs> People die in the movie. So, uh, yeah. Event eventually they die in the movie. This, this movie actually takes kind of a while. It's, and it's barely over an hour right, long. Yeah. Like, it's like 60... It says 70 minutes, but it's like... You take out credits, about 65, 68 yeah, minutes long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, even that's okay. I've seen some of these that say 70 minutes, and it's like 15 minutes worth of credits. Right. There's no... It's right. like normal amounts of credits in there, but that still comes out to the movie's like barely over an hour long. <laughs> that's okay. It could be a classic. Dumbo's barely over an hour long. That's a classic. Maybe this one will turn No. Down. <laughs> This is not the same as Dumbo. <laughs> they have some lines in this movie too, where oh, they break they break out some old school jokes in this movie, right? Where uh, uh, the guy puts popcorn on his head or something, and he's like, "Oops!" And then he goes, "Well, that's what your mother said when you were born." <laughs> And then the killer's dressed up later, wears a popcorn bucket on his head, by the way. Cause later, and like goes up to the manager, and the manager's like, I know that's you. What do you think? I was born yesterday. <laughs> but my favorite line in this movie is when they don't know what kind of movie I think that they're getting for their midnight screening. Yeah. And so one guy goes, what if it's a snuff film? And the manager, this is my favorite line in this movie, the manager goes, a snuff film? In Cinemascope. 
Come on, man. Let's be more realistic. <laughs> the movie's <laughs> not great. Like, no. <laughs> like, but if this were punched up a bit more, oh, they, yeah. they could definitely have something here. Like, I can see sure. elements of things that could that could work. Like, in the beginning, if it almost gave itself kind of a more of a clerk's vibe yeah. at the beginning of it, because yeah. you can see that there's seeds of that there. Yeah. Where... There's a lot of your stereotypical annoying moviegoers. Yeah. And there's a little bit of that. Yeah. If it was a bit more, if they played with that a bit more. I agree. And also, even having fun with have, having more like fake movies or something. Yeah. Like going back to Seinfeld. Yeah. Like the like the, the fake movies you hear on there. Like sometimes you just hear those crazy lines they have in the fake Seinfeld movies. Sure, yeah. If they played with that a bit more mm -hmm. and there were parts of it i don't know if you felt this way that could be retooled a bit in editing as well there were moments that almost felt like i was watching a rough cut yeah yeah um yeah we're like just simply adding in a musical score might have yeah might have jazzed it up a little bit because well what i thought was weird was like okay so uh the the dude the the wannabe stand-up comedian and the girl that kyle like, yeah. yeah kyle and and the girl that's like crushing on him or something like that it's what's so weird is that they're just playing tag <laughs> they're just playing tag <laughs> In the theater lobby, yeah. but but the camera angle is like, and and there's even like some suspenseful music being used. Oh yeah, during there was scene. music playing in that scene. <laughs> I'm like, just like, what are you doing? No, playing tag. No. I like their flirty ass <laughs> game of tag. She steals his hat and he's right. dead. And <laughs> wondering why, <laughs> wondering why he isn't chasing her. Right, like. There were stuff. There was stuff at the beginning where they were adding in shots of just kind of your bored closing time at a yeah. movie theater, like sweeping the popcorn up, checking the movie theaters, yeah. doing all of the end of shift stuff like that. Yeah. If there was some kind of maybe score thrown in there over it, yeah, that could have driven that home a little bit. I Other, think so. Okay. Otherwise, with it being pretty silent when it's doing that. Dragged. It looks like padding. Yeah, like it dragged. <laughs> yeah, there there is some padding here. There, there's there's a lot of parts where there's the, kind of some unnatural pauses in some of the dialogue. Again, I, I think to drag it out a little bit. There was just not very good acting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't harp on it too much for that. Like given what it is, the budget that it has. Sure. But I did like that one guy. Uh, the guy who played. Was his name Alan? The actor's name is Robert something. The dude who was like the smoker. Okay, yeah. Who was Alan. bringing up. I liked him. Yeah. Like, I, th I thought he did a pretty solid job in yeah. this. Like, uh, little, even like little kind of suave things he would do like with his cigarette and stuff yeah. like that. I'm like, I like this guy. Alan a Alan was a, uh, was a decent actor and so was um, the the younger girl that, that like was flirting with Kyle. Oh, yeah, she was having fun. Yeah, yeah. she was she was a better actor too. I, I think I think those two were probably the best actors of, of this cast. Sure. I mean it is like a lot of awkward lines that they have. Yes. Which did kind of make it a little funny. But yeah. like uh I the biggest laughs I got here's here's another thing that really could have elevated this. If if there was a lot more death scenes in this. Yeah. At the, but I will say this, the payoff to when something kind of bloody does happen, I did get a big laugh because... You just weren't this, expecting it? No, because the movie goes along at a pretty slow pace. Yeah. And by the time... Oh. There's one death... There's like that, no build-up. There's just... Yeah. But there's one death that happens off screen there's another where there's a body on the ground so for a while there i was like we're over halfway into this like movie that's barely an over an hour long so i was thinking in my head i was just like okay i'll bet you most of the deaths are kind of going to be off screen or not much is going to happen <laughs> like this decapitation scene happens. right <laughs> and i did laugh out loud you did it caught me off guard with it like i'm like oh when you, okay I get <laughs> well and when you laughed i thought you were you were laughing at like i thought you were uh, uh, implying that it was like cheesy or something like that but <laughs> it was a little cheesy well yeah um, but 
I'll say this, given, uh, once again, talking about the budget, the low budget uh, quality and everything, I thought it looked all right. I thought sure. it looked all right for, for the budget. Yeah it, yeah, it did. Like, and... And it was funny just to see that kind of digital head fly off for like a second. They don't linger on it too yeah, long, no, which is don't. probably good. Yeah. But it, it, I did get a laugh out of that. There's a neck snap that happened later in the movie that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and when the killer does show up, which that wasn't even a good payoff either. That was. They, but he had. A, I, I liked one of his lines where he's mad about it again. If you're upset that we're spoiling this. <laughs> watch the movie and come back so it's, it's a guy who's just an angry movie goer yeah who's pissed off exactly at, at the, he's pissed off at the uh at the employees because they don't control their damn like customers and so and so fucking like he's he's yeah oh they're they, he's yelling at the girl the employee and then um he's yelling at the employee and she says, well, why don't you just wait till the movie comes on DVD and watch it at home? And he's like, no, I want to see it in theaters the way it was intended. <laughs> Control your clientele. I'll give this a drunken movie night. Like, it's it's not the most extreme thing of its genre. It's not even the best. Like, there are better... There's better movie theater horror movies you could watch. There's stuff like Demons that was in a movie theater. There's... Uh, there was one I watched, I think it was called Porno, where they were watching an old exploitation movie, and it was, like, haunted, and a ghost came out of the screen or something. That that was really good. Well, so here's the thing. I would probably... Uh, my knee-jerk reaction would be to, uh, say, skip it, because this, this movie is not very well made. However, I have given passes to uh, uh, low-budget indie films... Uh, because, you know, we've, we've also made our share of low budget indie films. And, and so, and so I'll, I'll, I'm with you. Drunken movie night. At yeah. Least. Cause I kind of had fun watching this, like <laughs> the two, the two of us yeah. watching it. I don't know how fun I would have had if I was watching it on my own, right but <laughs> us two watching it. I don't know. It's like, it's short. Right. It, it, we it's, did get some laughs out of it. Yeah. It's called midnight screen. I know. Right. right? Like. <laughs> So meta. So yeah, yeah, meta. exactly. Welcome so to midnight screenings where we'll be reviewing midnight screenings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, again, that was fun to talk about. Like I knew we had to talk. Truth be told, the movie is pretty much what I thought it would be going into it. <laughs> <laughs> First establishing shot. I looked over at you and I said, "This feels like it's been directed by Ryan Mitchell." <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, man, it's the alternate universe where we made the midnight screenings movie. <laughs> All right. Well, we're we are. Uh, stay tuned because we got another one coming up. Uh, midnight screenings request, and it'll be for the Kirk Douglas Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger Western, the villain. So we'll see you then.